بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Peace and blessings upon all of those who are seeking the truth and the guidance which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our one and only creator has bestowed upon the righteous, the blessed and those who follow them Nabiyyin wa Siddiqin and those who are righteous in their shahada to Allah ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu being a witness uh, as well as those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destined for the greatest of his mercy which is in the akhirah we are hoping and praying that everyone is doing well wherever you may be and uh, whomever you may be we are also hoping and praying that they remain in the best of the mercy and the grace of our Lord and Creator according to that in which he has given instructions through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to proceed it has been quite a while for the most important topic to be answered and we're going to make the attempt to answer that today. Who are the people of the Republic? La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the elephant in the, in the room, so to speak. So we're going to have to clarify that. And we have received the reports to support and to refute the fact that it is a cult again this is not a cult it is a brand new religion of its own that is not the case either and that it is an illusion we have also refuted that it is not an illusion we have also refuted the fact that it is something created by man it is not created by man the people republic of la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the authentic message and the authentic practice of the message of worshiping allah and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone uh, this question is one in which everyone should reflect upon who even say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam For the simple fact that uh, it is the first covenant and it is the first pledge of allegiance to our Lord and Creator. So the question is what we have known in the past 100 years and if we look around today we can go to major cities all over the world and we can see so many so many who are going to masjids who are praying five times a day so many practicing and we also see so many who are not doing that as well so we have to take a step back and look at the statement the statement is one in which has substantiated the strength of the Iman or the strength of the faith. Now, if one believes that they can simply make the statement without practicing what the statement says, then that's like saying I've seen several stop signs while I'm driving or while I've been in a direction to the store, I have seen several different ways that I can take and I'm going to go down whichever one I like. Instead, the Quran is as if it's revealed on this very day, at this very moment, that we decide to take the practice according to the practitioners of the Quran. The first practitioner of the Qur'an is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if we look at our beloved messenger, our sibling, Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam, do we really believe that this is what he would be accustomed to, or this is what 
he would embrace the action that we are taking in order to uh, be the witnesses of his message, of his mission. When he left and departed, uh, we were not to come ever on a day in which we would say that his time is gone and what he could do in his time, we cannot do in our time. This was never supposed to be ever the, the, the statement of the true believer. This is only a statement of the destructors or those who wish to destroy the reputation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Khulafa Rashidin and the Ashra Mubashirin and the Ahl Badr and those who were with him on every expedition and those who were all the way at Karbala until those who will come beyond. It is very, very clear that the infrastructure, the, the carrying of affairs of Muslims today is not what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be doing, we all understand that. But then individually, when we look at ourselves, the covenant in which is the statement that we substantiate every single day, how much are we acting upon that? Everyone is going to say you are either of the working class or you're either of the, of the owner's class. In other words, you own or you are working for someone who owns. So it's either that, if you're saying, or if anyone disputes that, then it's possible that they are also uh, not caring for their livelihood, which is also a possibility of many. Also, um, when we say that, people get themselves into trouble so they can get locked up for the winter. And there are other cases where people remain in shelters uh, because they can save money better. People are in their vehicles and they can uh, save money on rent. So we have everything in between, in other words. How much or how many instances, samples of one who is going or not going to masjid in the morning, then going either home or back to work or to work, or, you know, I'm sorry, so back home or they return home or they go straight to work, and they work for one who owns. Now we're talking about anything from corporation to small businesses. And government, you know, have their entities and counties and this and that and the other. So any of those, any number of those things. And then after work, they either go home or they go shopping to the gym and then they come, they come home. This is what goes on during the working days and the non-working days, they are either uh, tightening up their homes because, you know, that we have to have big, big things inside of our homes. We have to dust that off. You know, we also have so many different type of changes of clothes we have to do. And then we have to do even more shopping, more shopping also. All weekend we're do running these errands. These are errands that we run when we do not go to work for some entity or whatever. We work for some owner, some some master, you know. Some, some, some type of system that we are not ourselves very much familiar to, other than the fact that it is our means of livelihood. We have to make the, we have to make the today's currency. And we, we've been encouraged by our forefathers. We've been encouraged by our, uh, our predecessors to get this money, get this currency for this world, make your world really comfortable. And uh, you're only going to live life one time, so you have to make sure you enjoy every last of it. So as we're putting this much pressure, did we take a look and see who really has established this type, that type of lifestyle? Clearly, Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, that was not his lifestyle. If you say, now we have masajids, now we have centers, Alhamdulillah for those, and praise be to Allah for those who keep their centers open 24 hours a day and at least try to implement what was the model of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in Medina, but we all know that's not the case throughout the week. Throughout the week, the masajids are either closed 
or they are only open for prayer times. So now where is the Shahada in that, in that practice of where we're closing masajids or we are not functioning as Prophet ﷺ functioned in substantiating the, the Shahada, which substantiates and which, which fortifies and which, which uh, protects our faith and our taqwa. How is it that we can say that we are following him and we're not living the life that he, that he lived or claim to even be able to, in our, in our senses, the, not just ours, I'm not, it's, it's too bad, but it's something that I've always been very clear on. Um, this is the way of, of a hypocrite. When you look at that lifestyle is not a lifestyle of a Muslim, it's a lifestyle of a non-Muslim. It's a lifestyle of the, the Yahud and the Nasara. That's how some of them, most of them have encouraged, been encouraged to live. And now we are saying, we as, as, as Muslims today, we're encouraging and making sure that, you know, our children also stay on that path. And it's strange that when you look at the leaders of today, you do not have and, and when I say leaders, I mean world leaders, world leaders who are from of Muslim countries. You know, what Muslim country is really leading the advocacy for the, the basic human rights for every Muslim on this earth today? Which, which, which Muslim nation is doing that? And this is a basic tenet for any Muslim. Uh, society to have. So it's not happening there and it's not happening at the at the bottom. So the bigger question now is if the Shahada is not is not practicing, is not being practiced, then how is it that you can even pray if your Shahada first of all is not accepted? Your Shahada itself is not, you're not practicing it. Um, what's accepted and what's not accepted is not as much of a question as to uh, the chance of your 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 covenants beyond the shahada, or your or ones we should say Muslims, uh, Muslim pillars of five, and it starts with the the basic shahada, is to make the statement. But it's really more living upon the statement than anything else. Anybody can make the statement, but that does not change if they do not change the actions and the practices and the thought the process and the entire deal. You have to take the entire package. So if one did not take the entire package of the entire Shahada, which creates and makes a much more of, a, of an impact than anything else, uh, because, you know, all throughout the, the rituals of, of, of the pillars of Islam, you have Shahada, Shahadas in every single one of them. No exceptions. So how is it that one feels that they can, they can neglect practicing the Shahada uh, 